Welcome to the garage. I'm Robert, and this is Haslip Cycle Works. Today, we're going to build a tool for the garage. I don't know how many times you've had the need to bend some thin sheet metal, uh, whether it be steel, aluminum, or some thinner stainless steel. On a small scale, nothing large. Um, so we don't really have a need for a large press brake or finger brake. Um, just something small that's easy to set up that we can use to bend something thin, something small like this. Like say we were going to make a, a bracket out of this or some sort of gusset and we needed to put a bend in it. Um, or if we had something thinner and a lot more of it, build a battery box for one of the bikes. How do you bend something like this without a whole lot of equipment cost and setup? I'm going to show you how to use something that most of all of us have in our garages along with a piece of scrap angle and a piece of heavier flat stock. That's all it takes. A little cutting grinding and uh, welding with your process of choice and today we're going to build a vice brake. You need to build your vice brake is a vice. Um, this I believe I got from Harbor Freight um, and you can use what I'm going to show you in this video for any size vice. Uh, this one, I believe, is a 4-inch vise. So you can do this with a 5-inch, 6-inch on up. Um, of course, the wider the jaws, the bigger the piece you can handle. You don't want to bend anything too thick with this because it is just a piece of all thread that runs through this body. If you want to do anything heavy, you're going to have to, unfortunately, go with something bigger, um, press break or something along those lines, um, which we will also be covering later because I do plan on purchasing a 20 ton shop press and building a finger break. But for now, uh, we have a four inch vise and some scrap metal. So let's put it to good use. So we know our jaws on our vise are four inches wide. So what we're going to need to do is cut three pieces out of this angle iron four inches wide. So this is a good piece, or good material is just over three, 13 and a half. So we should be good there. And our piece of heavier gauge flat stock, well, we got plenty there. So I'll use about half of this. So again, three pieces, four inches wide, or however wide you need to go with your vice jaws, and your heavier flat stock, four inches wide, or however wide your vice jaws are. I'm gonna go ahead and get these cut and cleaned up, and then uh, I'll bring you back. All right, so I just got done cutting and cleaning up our three four inch sections of angle and the piece that will actually push the material we want to bend into one of these. I haven't cleaned the inside yet, but um, we'll do that. So the goal is we're going to, the goal is we'll put our piece of metal that we want to bend in between these two pieces in the vise as we crank the vise down, you can see it'll kind of force it to bend. To get a better, sharper bend, what we need to do is put an edge on this leading edge. So what we're going to do is 45 on the top side and 45 on the bottom side. And that'll push into the, our angle nice and tight. Give us a nice, sharp bend. Uh, it'll actually be 
uh, with steel and most other metals even though this is a 90 degree on the inside of this angle and that's what we're going to be going for metal is going to have some spring back so while it's in the vise it'll look like a 90 when we pull it out it'll probably be like an 80 degree angle but that will definitely get us close enough for what we're doing here today so i'm going to go ahead and put our angle on the leading edge of our flat stock so one of the things that we need to do is on our piece of heavy flat stock we need to put a double angle on this leading edge that will push our part that we want to bend into the i guess we can call it the anvil section to do that you could do that by hand with um, a file if you have a long amount of time on your hands angle grinder with a flap disc will do it i am going to use my belt sander and i've tilted the table up and i'm just going to work it back and forth like this and then once i get half of it cut i'll flip it over and do the other side and that should give me a nice 45 on one side and 45 on the other nothing really special to see here so once i get it done i'll, I'll bring you guys back what i've done is measured halfway up from the outside to the end and lined up the edge of our anvil piece tacked it on both ends um, so now what I'm going to do is kind of clean it up and run a bead across the top flip it over and then run a bead across the bottom So, not my best weld ever. This is actually the starting point here. And kind of got my speed and everything straight about halfway through. Yeah, kind of a strange angle to be working at. Probably would have been better with MIG, but live you learn. Um, so now this is our anvil piece. And this will set in the vise just like that. So now what we need to do is take our other piece of angle and weld our, we'll call it the blade, to that. Um, but we can use this piece in the vise to center our blade up. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put this guy in the vise, the other piece of angle in the vise, and this guy and we'll kind of put pressure on it and that should center it where it needs to be so we'll go ahead and get that all mounted up and get it tacked together so unfortunately um the cord to my welder is too short to make it over to my bench vise so i grabbed the drill press vise and mounted everything up put some tension on it and we're good to go. If I had any complaint at all with my Everlast 160 STH, it's that that cord that goes to the wall outlet is pretty short. Other than that, perfect machine. Anyway, carrying on. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and run a couple small beads along the top. Make sure it's locked in. I'm gonna let it cool so that we're not warp in our piece or anything then I'll flip it over and um, run some beads on the back side all right let's do it All right, so as you can see, we've got our pieces back in the bench vise, nice and solid, cooled down. Let's see if it works. So this is our 
first piece. It's 12 gauge. It's kind of thick, um, but this should handle it. Um, I'm not going to measure this or anything. What we want to do is just proof, proof of concept, really. One thing I will add, so if you build one of these, add a magnet to each piece, and that'll keep it in the vise because when you go to open your vise up to put your workpiece in, they're going to want to fall down. Um, or you could probably cap the ends off on both pieces, weld the nut, and then some set screws and that would tighten it down to the jaws on the vise and keep it from falling while you're trying to load your workpiece. See if I can make do here. Just drop our piece right in. Just make sure everything's lined up. Get some tension on it and I'm just going to crank down on it. And you just keep going. Uh, if you're trying to go for as close to a 90 as possible, go until you feel a whole lot of resistance on that handle. Just back off. There we go. Actually does look like it's just past 90 degrees. So that'll work perfect. Uh, we can build all sorts of brackets and tabs and Pretty much anything we want now we just cut out what we want and bend it up and like i said it real basic three pieces of angle iron one heavier gauge piece of flat stock uh, and this is i didn't go out and buy this this was literally just stuff that i had sitting around um, left over from other stuff i'd built so i um, sure if you're creative you can come up with something else um, if you've got some solid round stock that might be a good idea to replace this piece of angle with you can use larger angle or smaller angle uh, you want something that's pretty thick because you are putting a lot of stress on these pieces yeah um, that seemed to work pretty good and the best part is it was free minus a little bit of time and effort on our part and if you're still having trouble with the concept you're just wedging your metal in between this guy and this guy and it just forces it to bend and you see the result um, I can't be happier with that the edge is of course it's not super crisp but it never really is with these sort of devices I am more than happy with that so uh, look for this in future episodes. We'll definitely be getting some use out of this. Uh, maybe making some improvements or some alterations to it. In a nutshell, that's it, guys. Um, a little bit of scrap metal, a little bit of ingenuity, and some time. And you saved yourself from spending $30, $40 on a tool that you can make yourself. Until next time, get up, get out there, and do it.